Let's explore this topic a little more with Camilo Perez Bostillo. He's a research fellow at Stanford University and a fellow of the Comparative Research Program on Poverty. He joins us from Palo Alto, California. Camilo, you've clearly done extensive research on human rights and poverty in Latin America. How much is domestic work playing a role in helping these women in Latin America uh, pull themselves out of poverty? I think what we see in Latin America is that despite the fact that on a global level, poverty rates have decreased, as we've heard this morning, poverty in Latin America in the most vulnerable sectors, in fact, has increased and become more concentrated. Those are precisely the sectors from which most domestic workers in Latin America come. Overwhelmingly, we're speaking of women, a vulnerable sector in themselves, but also specifically people from indigenous communities and from communities of African descent. So across all of those lines of vulnerability, domestic workers stand out. We're talking about approximately 50 million or more domestic workers globally, but in Latin America, approximately 20 million. And in country after country, we see this pattern repeated of deepening vulnerability and marginalization. The key issues are discrimination, and with all human rights issues, government compliance and enforcement. Well, in many of these cases, uh, these domestic workers are in their late teens when they go into these homes. A lot of them stay for decades. Many of them never leave. Uh, why is that? What we see is that these are the only opportunities available for these vulnerable sectors. These are because of structural injustices that are embedded in the political economy of these countries. When we speak of countries like Brazil, Mexico, of course, the two largest countries in Latin America in terms of population and territory and diversity, what we see is that these patterns persist and that what is needed is greater commitment from the public sector. There have been advances made in each of those countries and in about a dozen others in terms of new legal protections. But the key thing is for the governments to step up to their obligations. And the other thing that's key is the self-organization of domestic workers themselves. This has been a key factor both in Brazil and in Mexico. Globally, there is a new international labor organization convention protecting the rights, the right to decent work for domestic workers. This is Convention 189 that was adopted in 2011. There are about 20 countries around the world who have signed on or who have ratified it, but that's not enough. It's already gone into effect with the first would, two countries. Would that yes. help with overtime, paid holiday, maternity leave for these women? Th those would be exactly the issues that would have to be addressed, and also the informality of the sector. What that means is lack of access to protections from Social Security, to limits in terms of working hours, and to requirements in terms of working conditions. This is a fundamental issue of injustice, and a change is needed in Latin America and around the world. And how frequent are incidents of abuse that we're even aware of? Very frequent, and especially because we're speaking about young women, we're talking about processes of sexual harassment and other forms of gender-based discrimination that specifically target this sector. These women are very vulnerable. This is especially true of migrant domestic workers in settings such as the Gulf countries uh, in the Arab world and many Filipino women around the world in states like Indonesia and also in regions like Hong Kong. All right, we'll leave it there. Camilo Perez Bostillo, thank you so much.